you know, so far everything that we've talked about today, all of the various pieces of corruption, the lies, the, the various reasons why we should not trust government on just about everything. A lot of it has to do with them trying to manipulate us. A lot of it has to do with omission. And it is omission that brings me to this final final piece of today's show, this final piece of the puzzle, and the one that I consider to be arguably the most important because it betrays the reality of our government in a way that is inexcusable. You might be able to say, for example, that, hey, you know, maybe they really do believe that the vaccines work, or maybe they just don't think they have the power to fight them, or maybe they're being bribed or whatever. You might be able to make some sort of claim about that. You might be able to say, hey, voter fraud is a toxic subject. So the reason that you can't trust them in, in that regard, at least, you know, they're for whatever reason, maybe they think they're they're doing right by keeping MAGA people out of there. Maybe whatever. OK, you can find any justification you want for pretty much everything that I've discussed today. But there's one subject that I don't cover nearly enough that I need to cover more. One subject that is the epitome of why you must not trust government. Now, a lot of people refer to it as, and I would say the vast majority of people refer to it as as child trafficking or child sex trafficking. I don't like calling it that because I think that it diminishes the true depravity, the, the hideousness of the crime. This is child rape that we're talking about. This is rape and torture of children. This is the destruction of a life falling just short of, of absolute murder as far as the worst things that you could do to somebody. These lives, the lives of these children that are getting getting raped and tortured by whoever, these lives are destroyed. They are permanently affected. That child will not grow up to be the same person that he or she would have had they not been raped. It changes a person's life. It changes everything about them, their entire future becomes changed based upon the one event, hopefully just one, but many times, as we know, there's multiple events, multiple, multiple hideous crimes performed against them. And our governments at almost every level ignore this problem. And the problem is growing. This one, there is no excuse. You can't find any justification for any politician, any member of government, any bureaucrat, any whatever who does not hold this at the highest priority. It is getting worse. And you might say, well, child rape has been around forever. Rape in general has been around forever. Fine. But it is getting worse. It's getting worse here in the United States. It's getting worse across the world. And that just should not be, not based upon the level of technology that law enforcement has. The way that, I mean, we're giving away rights after rights after rights. Every piece of privacy is being stripped of us. You can't walk through an American city without being monitored in some way. And yet still, despite all this, the the, the raping of children is increasing. How is that even possible? Well, it's possible, not only because of the, the cultural effects of, of radical cultural Marxism, not just because of the obvious uh, moral and ethical boundaries being torn down because as a nation and as a planet in many ways, not all, all nations are like this, but at least here in the United States, the faith has been attacked to the point that it's it's diminishing. The faith of the people, the I guess you could say the the acceptance of the Bible as the inerrant word of God, that has diminished so greatly just in recent years, let alone decades. Both those things can can be clearly attributed to the rise of child rapes here in the United States. But you can also look to a political reason, many political reasons behind it. And it really does come down to radical leftism. I posted an article over at uh, discernreport.com that, well, I think that it's it's one of the most difficult ones for me to write. I don't take well to this subject. Maybe that's why I don't talk about it nearly enough. I titled it Radical Leftism in Government is to Blame for the Unfathomable Rise of Child Rapes. And I'm not going to read the entire article because it does it is very long, and it does go into not just my article, but one by Michael Snyder over at the Economic Collapse blog that goes into some details about just recent events. And frankly, I just don't want to I don't want to echo those, even though maybe I should. Maybe I will. Maybe that's exactly what we need. Maybe we need more people to be aware of how heinous these crimes being committed against children are. 
Go in the article. <clears throat> Over the years, I've learned to never attribute to politics what can better be explained by culture. For example, many try to blame Democrat policies for the rise of LGBTQIA plus indoctrination in family-friendly drag shows or in our own schools. But it's really the deterioration of cultural sanity and an abandonment of biblical principles that are the actual culprits. With that said, the rampant child sex trafficking problem in America can be attributed to a combination of lagging faith, failing culture, and the criminal empowering policies of leftists, mostly Democrats. Even the phrase, quote, child sex trafficking, is a failure because it downplays the depravity of the crimes themselves. Trafficking can be applied to drugs or illegal merchandise. It implies criminal activity of movement, <clears throat> taking the focus away from the actual heinous crime of raping and torturing children, destroying their lives from the start, and greatly reducing the chance that they can live happily and fulfilled. We have major problems with cultural Marxism continuing to rise in America. We definitely have tremendous problems with a population that does not spend nearly enough time on our knees in prayer or reading our Bibles. Both are massive factors in the advancement of raping and torturing of children, but political leftism and radical policies can rightly be attributed as playing big roles as well. These policies have reduced the jail time spent by those who get caught, rendering our judiciary impotent to render appropriate judgments on child rapists. These policies have made it, <clears throat> quote, hate speech to call out those who promote child rape as long as they do so with, with careful wording. Perhaps worst of all is that the cultural degradation and reduction of faith can both be, in part, blamed on Democrats and their milquetoast Republican cronies for pushing the worship of, quote, lowercase gods like climate change and wokeness to the detriment of Judeo-Christian values. In America today, diversity trumps reality. Equity trumps sanity. Inclusivity trumps quality. In other words, lies trump the truth. This is why child rapists are getting months in jail, while somebody who entered the Capitol building on January 6th, 2021, may spend years behind bars. This is why the FBI pulled agents from the field who were hunting child predators so they could track grandmas who spoke out at school board meetings. Our government has prioritized leftist talking points over fighting the good fight against evil. It's no wonder boys pretending to be girls are raping fellow students in school bathrooms. There's an article by Michael Snyder over the Economic Collapse blog that details some of the stomach-wrenching incidents that have been in the news just over the last few days. Expand this out over the months and years, and it spells doom for the United States. Our children are in jeopardy, and the only way we can fix this is to replace wokeness, cultural Marxism, DEI idiocy, and anti-faith policies with real justice. If we cannot protect our children, we are worthless. We are worthless as a nation. And we are a nation that deserves whatever judgment is coming. And folks, there is judgment coming. I don't want to speak for God. But we saw what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. And I would argue that the trajectory we're on, I wasn't there, obviously. But based on what we know about the depravity there, we're there again. Okay? This is it. This is what, okay, I mean, this is the, this nation and the world in general. We have become evil. We've, and you would say, well, we've always been evil, and that's true. And, you know, we, there is, there's no one who is good in this world, at least not amongst men and women. But, you know, we have embraced a level of evil that has just destroyed us destroyed our character, destroyed our, our sensibilities, and yet nobody in politics is talking about this. Why? 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 I mean, how can you trust anyone who has power to address this, who has power as representatives of the people to help defend the people? Children are people. Parents are people. I would say the monsters who are raping and torturing these children, maybe they're not people. But it seems based upon the way that our government is heading right now, that they have more rights than their victims. I'm going to turn back to the article, because if I keep ranting, this is going to turn very ugly. I can assure you of that. 
The article by Michael Snyder was titled, You May Want to Vomit After You Read About the Unspeakable Evil That Is Happening All Over America Right Now. More kids are being sexually victimized in the United States than ever before in our entire history. As you will see below, in some cases, kids are being raped 20 to 30 times a day, and very little is being done to prevent this from happening. But this crisis is certainly not just limited to the hundreds of thousands of children that have been forced into sexual slavery. In our society today, very young children are being constantly bombarded with extremely sick and twisted messaging on television, in the movies, on the internet, and in their classrooms. What are we doing to American children, or what we are doing to American children, is beyond criminal, and if we do not reverse course, our nation is not going to have a future. Every society throughout history that has violated children like we are violating them has fallen. And I'm assuming he's referring to the Romans, assuming he's referring to the, the Mesopotamians, and now the American Empire is falling victim to the same evil. Back to the article. If you actually believe that we will be able to get away with our heinous crimes, you are just being delusional. Every single day, hordes of extremely young, quote, sex workers are being paraded in the streets of our major cities. In fact, in East Oakland, the pimps have become so brazen that they are actually forcing their girls to solicit men right outside a Catholic grade school. And he's referring to an article over from ABC7 News video uh, showing women who appear to be sex workers soliciting right outside a Catholic grade school in East Oakland is raising concern about human trafficking in the area. Parents and city officials tell the I team young women, some police believe may be trafficked, are walking outside St. Anthony's K through eighth grade school off East 15th Street in Oakland at all hours of the day. Back to Michael's article. This is even happening while school is in session and has been reported that some of the prostitutes are just 15 or 16 years old. I'm not going to read any part of that. Further south, the sex industry in Los Angeles has been absolutely thriving. One man named David Cox that helps to rescue those involved in the industry say that girls as young as 11 are being victimized. And he also says that some of the kids in LA streets are being raped 20 to 30 times a day. This from a uh, quote from an article over at Zero Hedge. <clears throat> Victims are sometimes brought in from other states or countries said David Cox, COO of ZOE International, a Los Angeles-based nonprofit that helps victims recover once, rescue lo once rescued locally and internationally. Cox said his organization, partnering with simo similar Los Angeles-based nonprofit Saving, Saving Innocence, has cared for 893 youth victims of sex trafficking this past year, with some as young as 11. In our city, kids are being raped 20 to 30 times a day, he says. And back to Michael's article, it is like hell on earth for these children, but most of our leaders don't seem to care. Every once in a while, some, someone actually uh, does actually get busted for having sex with kids, but often those that do get busted are hit with extremely light sentences. For example, a 20-year-old man that actually raped two girls under the age of 10 will only be serving 180 days in jail, and that's uh, from lawofficer.com. Is this what passes for justice in modern America? Of course, if we had uh, a, just, a just society, millions of sexual predators would be serving hardcore prison time now. In the previous article, I had shared some very sobering statistics that originally came from an excellent piece by John and Nisha Whitehead. And um, they refer to, you know, consider this every two minutes. A child is bought and sold for sex. Hundreds of young girls and boys, some as young as nine years old, are being bought and sold for sex as many as 20 times per day. Adults purchase child, children for sex at least 2.5 million times a year in the United States alone. 2.5 million times a year somebody is buying a kid for sex. They are raping children here in the United States. In Georgia alone, it is estimated that 7,200 7, men, half of them in their 30s, seek to purchase sex with adolescent girls each month, averaging roughly 300 per day. On average, a child might be raped by 6,000 men during a five-year period. This is why I don't talk about this stuff more, folks. It's because it, it infuriates me. I mean, if there's anything that could drive me to engage in criminal violence, this is it, okay? What I would do not even going to go there. Back to Michael's article. This is America now. We've become a nation that is absolutely teeming with predators. Sadly, way too often, that includes men in position of power and authority. 
earlier today, I came across yet another example. And this comes from AmericanMilitaryNews.com. A former, in this, from, from their article, a former producer for ABC News was arrested Tuesday on federal charges of transporting child pornography. James Gordon Meek, who lives in Arlington, Virginia, had several devices seized from his home by the FBI last April, the Department of Justice said in a statement. According to court documents, they contain images of children engaged in sexually explicit conduct. Authorities also found multiple chat conversations with the user who expressed enthusiasm for sexually abusing kids. I'm not going to read any more of this. I can't. Our government, your your representatives at the city, state, and local level, city, state, and national level, sorry, they're doing nothing about this. They might make speeches or send out a tweet every now and then about heinous this is. But if they really wanted to represent us, if they really wanted to do, I mean, this is something universal. We can say beyond a shadow of a doubt the, that the vast majority of the people, other than the sickos themselves, the vast majority of Americans would fully support legislation at any level that will crack down on this, that will make it to where these men, and sometimes women, are put behind bars indefinitely. I mean, they there's no recourse from this. There's no coming back from this. If you're willing to do that to a child, you do not belong in society. You need to get used to jail because that's where you're going to stay. Not for not for 180 days, not for six months, not for six years. Anybody who will do that to a child should be removed from society because they have there's nothing valid about them. They should be we should lock them away and pray that they find find Jesus because that's the only thing. That's the only they 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 cannot be part of this society anymore. That's it. I'm I'm done. <laughs> Not gonna talk about this anymore. Not today at least. Maybe tomorrow. Lord willing, I will be back very soon with another episode, but in the meantime, y'all stay strong, stay safe. God bless America. Peace. You know, the first thing they're going to go after when the powers that be do go after our food supply in uh, in earnest, which I expect will be in 2023, maybe 2024, but, but probably 2023. The first thing they're going to go after is protein. They're already starting to attempt to normalize to get us to, to accept bugs, crickets, mealworms, whatever, as our source of protein. Now, you won't see the global elite cabal eating these bugs. Maybe they'll do it in public, and it probably won't even be bugs. But in private, they'll be eating steaks and stuff like that. And I, too, will be eating stuff like that. I will be eating chicken. I get my chicken through my company, Prepper Organics. You can go to PrepperOrganics.com. Click through and uh, order some, some freeze-dried, long-term storage, organic sous vide chicken. It'll last for 15, 20, 25 years. Yeah, one package will get you get you uh, 15 to 20 servings uh, with 20 to 25 grams of protein each. And it is, of course, delicious. So check it out. And right now, I hate doing these short-term promos ads, but right now we have a sale going on. Use promo code JDR at checkout. That's promo code JDR at checkout, and you will get $50 off. So go to prepperorganics.com, use promo code JDR, and get yourself lots of chicken because chicken is a lot better than crickets.